Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm David from HG Magazine, and I've got Joe with me today uh, from Medusa. Um, we'll just give everybody a couple of minutes just to grab the coffee, grab the cup of tea, or the glass of red wine in a mug, whatever sort of takes your fancy at this time in the morning. I think Joe's gone for the wine. Um, and then we'll, we'll sort of crack on and, and uh, once everybody's on. Um, just as a bit of housekeeping to start, um, if you uh, have a look at the bottom of your screen, you should see a chat um, or a Q&A box uh, function. If you just drop something in there, let us know that you can hear us, that you can see us. Um, everything is working okay. That's always good to know. Um, and as we go along today as well, please feel free to use it as we're going along. So we will have a sort of uh, Q&A section at the end, um, but please uh, put any questions that you've got as we go along so you don't forget. But then also if it's, uh, if it's relevant to the topic that we're talking about, I might pull out a uh, curveball or two and sort of throw them to Joe as we're going along and see if we can knock him off, uh, knock him off track a little bit. I, I was going to say, last time me and David did a webinar together, um, he managed to disconnect for a good couple of minutes. So, you know, you can't, you can't give me a worse curveball than that, I don't think. I managed, no, to, I managed don't. to talk for a bit, but... I, I was impressed. You, you did really well, actually. I managed to sort of disconnect, watch a whole episode of Only Fools and Horses, and get back on, and you're still going. So I, uh, I thought you did a good job with that. But thankfully, I've kicked everybody off Netflix today. The kids are doing something different, so internet shouldn't be a problem today. So, uh, hmm. so we should be good. Um, we've got a couple of people who have said hello. Hi, David. Hi, Suzanne. So that's good. People can see and hear us um, as well. If you do have any issues as we're going along today, uh, one of the things I would um, just recommend is if you just jump off the call and go back on, sometimes that fixes it. Um, but hopefully um, everything should be fine. And we are recording it as well um, to make sure that everybody can have a copy afterwards. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll crack on. Uh, it seems that everybody's making some good progress and, and joining us. So, so welcome. Um, I'm David from uh, XG Magazine. One of the things that we're looking uh, to do today is team up with Joe and really looking to uh, reduce a bit further um, and also what Reducer has been doing, what they're doing over the next sort of 12 months um, and some of the stuff that they've got to show us as well. So we have got um, a bit of a demo for what, what Joe's going to show to us today as well, um, especially in this sort of poignant time. Obviously, last night there was another sort of COVID update. So we've got a pub timeline now, as uh, I've been calling it, um, of when we can go out. But obviously, that's quite a... Um, Big topic at the moment, especially for businesses and for clients, uh, making sure that they're obviously managing spend, keeping control of cash, keeping money in, in their pockets um, to control their own destiny, really, because that's a big, a big topic at the moment. And I think Reduce has got a really big sort of important place um, in that. So, so Joe, I just want to hand over to you quickly just to introduce yourself. Uh, and for those of uh, the listeners that have not sort of come across uh, Reduce before, who is it and what do you do? Sure. OK, so um, I'm Joe. I'm one of the founders two founders of Reducer. Um, my background is I'm a chartered accountant, so I qualified at Deloitte and then worked in a couple of fast growth um, startups, so one called Gusto, which uh, hopefully some of you have been enjoying over lockdown, which does food delivery. So I set up the finance team there and ran that, and then joined a company called Carwell, who do um, yeah, sell new cars online. Again, less people going to be enjoying that over lockdown, but again, turned into a family name and and uh, set up the finance team, run the finance team there. Both of those places, um, you know, we were concentrating on growth. The finance team spent a lot of time working out like, where can we grow, where we can we build, where we can get more revenue from. One of the jobs that, that we had to deal with though is we had hundreds of different suppliers um, across hundreds of things that we, we really didn't understand. So I'm, I'm not, wasn't an expert in energy. I wasn't an expert in like taking recurring part card payments, which is what Gusto did. Um, but we had to somehow manage those, those things. And what I found was that there wasn't much information out there and there wasn't much help out there. And we ended up just, you know, calling one supplier, getting a, getting a deal. Um, what, what I ended up working out was that we ended up overpaying on nearly everything we bought that wasn't core to the business because we weren't spending the time and effort um, comparing prices on them. And to be honest, it wasn't worth our time comparing the prices on them because it, it took so long. So Reducer was really formed to, to make it really, really simple to compare spend across a business. So compare more than one area all at the same time without any need for data input or anything like that. And the, the real sort of insight or the real sort of magic um, of Reducer is that we pull data from cloud accounting systems. So your zero, your QuickBooks. So instead of having to fill in a form saying like, this is what I spend, 
this is how much you use across all these different areas. We pull all that data from the accounting system. We um, then compare it to hundreds of different suppliers and then prepare reports saying, here are the different areas you're paying and um, spending. Here's where you can save money. Here's where you're already on a good deal, blah, 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 blah. All takes sort of about 30 seconds to connect a client up and then we just do the, do the hard work. So it's really a product that I hoped existed or I wanted to exist when I was um, an in-house accountant. And we've, we've kind of built that product and, and extended on it over the last two years. So started the business a couple of years ago um, and slowly, slowly uh, built up, built up, uh, took on some accountants, started working with them, started tailoring the business a bit more to working with um, or working via accountants. Um, and that's really where our focus is at the moment, partnering accountants to um, discover cost savings for their clients. Sorry, it's a bit of a ramble there, David. You... <laughs> no, that's fine. It's, it's a good bit of background. It's, uh, it, it's not, it's, I, I find it really useful if, if you just give that background of who you are and what you're doing. It just makes it uh, it just gives a good bit of context for everybody sort of listening in your seat. So it's not ramble at all. It's, it's really, really useful. So thanks for that. That's good. Good to know. I won't, I won't stop there. <laughs> no, no, it's good. So uh, I think congratulations is in order actually, because um, Reducer was actually the zero app partner of the month uh, for last month. So congratulations for that. Um, and I just wanted to sort of go into uh, what do you think that actually means for Reducer? Because it's quite a recognition. If you look at the zero ecosystem now, I think there's something like seven, eight hundred plus uh, different apps within there. So obviously for you to be picked out of all of those is, is really quite good. So why, why do you think that was? Yeah, I think I think, um, yeah, as you say, it's a big recognition of what, what we in the team have done. And I think it's it's almost so you get one mark of recognition when you make it to the app store and you get past the zero sort of certification to get there. And I think this is, this is a second sort of mark from zero that where something they approve of and we're doing the right things and we're working with accountants and their clients in the right way. I think the real reason that, that we got this far and they, they gave it to us is the um, reviews we got on the app store. So I think we're on sort of 56 five-star reviews, which puts us in the top sort of, top 100 of all time, and probably the top 10 of this year in terms of apps on the app store, which is, you know, a remarkable achievement for a new business. So I think, I think it's really them saying to their accounting partners, look, this is something that works. We've seen the feedback. It's really strong. Take a look at this. And it's a massive mark of confidence in us, I think, from them. What I guess what we do is brand new. So, you know, it's, it's almost like when Receipt Bank started doing data, data input sort of 10, 12 years ago. Um, everyone was sort of waiting a little bit to see, like, does it work? Does it do everything it's, it's sort of hyped up to do? Um, and eventually it's come into the mainstream and now, you know, tens of thousands of people are using this. I think this is the same journey that we're going on here. We're the first people to do um, spend management via cloud accounting systems. Um, it's, it's a brand new sort of industry and topic. And I think for Zero to give us this recognition really shows that they're behind this um, category that, that we're creating. No, that's really good. And like I say, again, congratulations for that because uh, there's, there's a lot of apps to go through. And I just really, I think it goes to show the, the job that you guys have been doing, especially over the last sort of 12 months as well, since we sort of last spoke. So uh, I think everybody likes to see, uh, see sort of beneath the hood a little bit, so to speak. So I understand you've got um, a demo report to actually go through with us to give people an idea of what, what the information actually looks like that they get back. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's it. So I'll, I'll quickly run you through the process. So uh, as I said, Reduce is a really, really simple thing to set up. It doesn't take, yeah, it doesn't take more than 30 seconds. All you need to do is connect your business or your client to the system. Um, and then we, we do the work. So I'll just share my screen. Um, one second. So this is a standard sort of accountant dashboard that, that we'll see at Reducer. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but on the left, you can um, connect new clients via Zero, either Zero or QuickBooks. And um, you have a sort of overview of how many clients you've onboarded, how many of the analysis we've completed, how many are in progress. Um, and just to confirm as well, we can see your cursor, so you're okay. Uh, fantastic. Um, yeah, analyses. Um, it took me a long, long time to work out whether that was the right word or not, but according to the uh, dictionary it is. 
Um, I don't know what I was going to be. So uh, you can see the total savings found and you can see a sort of view of your clients. If you click on explore the savings, you see a bit more, oh, sorry. You see a bit more detail on the savings we found. So um, sort of a breakdown of where they've been and then per client, you can sort of see what day the report was published, what the savings were and the breakdown of where those savings, savings are. Um, each client, will then get sent a report and this is an example of um, the report so we do white label these for accountants so you can get these in your own brand and with your own um, logo at the top and the reports based break down the savings we found per client and obviously we don't always find savings in every place quite often we'll find people on good deals um, but what we have for example is in card payments will have um, the overall saving, will have um, their current supplier, their future supplier, any other options we have, um, as well as a breakdown of what that, that actually means. So in the deal, deal, deal details here, you'll see um, the, the level of detail we go in to create a really fair comparison. So um, this, this um, business is with WorldPay, our uh, best offers with payment sense and you really go down into the nitty gritty of you know their credit card rate at the moment is half a percent the new rate is 0.2 percent business credit is 2.1 like you know you, you see the level of detail we've gone in that you can you can delve into if you want um and you can sort of click around and see uh, here's my saving with british gas um i can take the deal if i want to or i can see all the other options available to it with me. So it's like a price comparison report that you might see from um, Compare the Market for your personal um, personal sort of spend, um, but a bit wider. It, it covers the entirety of spend across those, those nine areas that we currently cover, which are electricity, gas, water, payments, telecoms, waste, fuel, mobile, other, and you guys can read for yourself. Um, the other kind of interesting thing we can we do or we've just started doing is I don't know if you can see this because it's behind the zoom thing on mine is we've started um, providing videos for some of these savings reports where yeah, someone will talk that. perfect where someone will talk you through the savings I won't click on it um, but one of our savings analysts will talk you through um, the different options in front of you. Um, just to give you more of a personalised sort of feeling on how um, personalised feeling and personalised uh, explanation of the savings that we found. What we also have started doing with some accountants is putting a little video from the accountant at the front of that um, and then the video from us. So it will be, hey, it's X from XYZ Accounting. Um, this is the report we've, we've compiled with producer. Um, your client partnership manager X is going to is going to take you through it, just to give you a bit more of a um, of a sort of recognition for the accountant having um, worked with us and um, yeah, get the recognition from their client that they they've uh, been driving this with us. That that's kind of it. Like it's I wouldn't say simple because um, there's a lot of stuff that we do below the surface but in terms of what an accountant and a business sees it's it's really basic it's 30 seconds to upload a client and then we go away we prepare a report we give you an email when the report's ready and then um the report looks looks something like this or this i think that's it in terms okay. of in terms of product view yeah and, and that's, that's really the first time you've seen it david no, I've not. I've had a sneak peek before, actually. So I've uh, I've got ways and means to see these things. So I think that's it's it's. I think that's really useful for the listeners. And one of the things that I, we always get asked um, is basically around that you've just said there. It's thirty seconds to sort of set somebody up. But what what does it really take? Because sometimes you can be enticed to that. Is it a case of do the records to have to be of a certain standard in terms of if we're connected into zero, obviously it's pulling the data in from there. So just to give people an idea behind that and say, look, this is the type of information we're looking at. So if you upload a client and obviously nothing's been reconciled, then nothing's really going to happen. So yeah. what, what, what's, that, what's that state of affairs? Look like? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So we need, we need some things to have been reconciled and we ideally work off attachments. So, you know, the, the, the way we get the data is we um, have a sort of matching 
algorithm that looks at sort of supplier details and all the different ways of saying like, so we do mobiles, all the different ways you can imagine of putting O2 into an accounting system. So O2, zero two, um, yeah. I mean, that's that's two ways, <laughs> all the different ways, the two ways I can think of, um, all the different ways of pulling that out. And then we, we get that sort of sorted in the back end and then we get the um, the bill and then we we go and uh, pull the data off the bill and um, compare it to the pricing we have. So what we need the accountant or the business to have in their accounting system is reconciled data and um, usually attachments. So there are a few things we can do kind of without attachments. So for example, British Gas allow us to get prices um, without attachments sometimes. Um, some water companies will allow us to do that, but in general, we'll, we'll need attachments. Um, so it doesn't need to be up to date, so it could be six, six months old and we can still do price comparison, but the more up to date it is, the better quality data we have. And I think especially with COVID having such big effects on spend, um, we're finding that the more recently updated, the better we can quote people because we know we can see, for example, how COVID's affected their spend, especially on something like, say, online car payments, car payments, something like that. We can really see how COVID's affected their spend and therefore make sure they're in the right sort of group for, um, for getting the right prices for them. Yeah, that's really useful. And just following on from that, actually, a question is coming in from Sharon, who is just saying, um, yeah, basically, we have a number of clients where we might just put um, items in on the bank and reconcile it directly without those attachments. So what you're saying is that's fine to a point, but if you really want it to be all singing or dancing and to give you the best possible results, try and get some attachments in there too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As long as the, if the attachments are in there, otherwise, I could I could probably give you stats, but off the top of my head, if we don't have attachments, we'll probably get a report sort of five to ten percent of the time. So it's pretty pretty yeah. low. If we have attachments, it's more like sixty seventy percent of the time we'll be able to to find savings. And um, yeah. the sort of yeah, what, what if if so we've got those eight spend areas, and if we find um, if a business uses all eight of those, on average, we'll find nearly five thousand pounds spend as uh, spend five thousand pounds yeah. saving. <laughs> Um, obviously, on average, businesses don't have all eight of those. Um, but if they have one of those areas, we'll, we'll find them on average about one thousand pound, one thousand eight hundred um, in savings per year. So there's still quite a substantial um, opportunity there for for savings for businesses. Um, yeah. Definitely. And one of the questions that's come through is obviously our favourite sort of um, accounting software is zero because uh, that's what we do a user's uh, magazine for. But um, there are obviously lots of other accounting systems out there. So do you, do you integrate with other accounting systems as well as Zero at the moment? So it's, uh, it's Zero and QuickBooks at the moment are the only ones we work with. Um, we've, we've kind of looked at Sage and um, again, it comes back to that data quality question. Um, in general, we, we expect or um, have had other people tell us that data quality in Sage is, is in general lower than in Zero. So we haven't put the effort in to um, do that connection yet. We are talking to Sage about the connection, but I think a lot of their clients are still on um, the sort of desktop version and then they, they don't have the attachment on, so they wouldn't really work for us. So we're very much, you know, um, QuickBooks and Zero led at the moment. Yeah, okay, no, that's really useful because, um, and especially as well because there's lots of accountants in there that work sort of across platform so i think it just gives accountants and bookkeepers yeah. who are listening um, a good insight to that as well um okay so are there any other benefits as well as obviously just sort of saving clients money um that that reducer office is, as well so that's obviously the headline one but is there anything else around that as well that you've got i think toolkit i think i think so let, let's de delve into the problem a little bit more because um i think the the impression I had when I started the business was that the reducer was all about saving money. And I think actually, you know, what we've learned is, is business owners just want someone else to deal with this. The money's great. And like, um, they do appreciate savings, but really, you know, if you're running three or four pizzerias, um, you've got so much to deal with. You've got to deal with your stock, your inventory, your staffing, your, uh, you've got to deal with your, your accountant, your lawyers, like, all of these different things and all of the fun things that you want to be doing, like menu creation, 
Um, I always joke that no one starts a business because they want to do more cost management apart from me. Um, like no one starts a business because they want to be calling up suppliers and haggling over prices for their, for their gas supply. Like no one wants to be doing that. They, um, they really want someone else to, to manage it for them. So really the, the major benefit of producers not price. And we do talk about price a lot, but it's that peace of mind that someone else is looking after it and someone else has got you covered. And you know, you just don't have to worry about this stuff. Like we've got this, we'll manage it. We'll tell you when things are, are going to expire, when your contract's coming out and your rates are going to go up, we'll let you know about that. So we have a contract management system that, um, that yeah, reminds businesses when they're about to go out of contract and we'll send them their, um, you know, their options when that, when that happens. Like that's, that's a real sort of peace of mind um, piece. Uh, sorry, I got a bit confused about where I was going. I just, just uh, was talking off um, it's fine. It's, it's just systems in, and, yeah it's just seeing and, outside of obviously the cost reduction is the main thing but you're saying yeah. as well as the cost reduction obviously that's uh sort of what i'd call a result of the action yeah um, the, the sort of main purpose is itself is that peace of mind for the client and uh, yeah I think, to sort I think sleep so. easy at night i think so yeah i think um you know we we have account management so you know we work with clients we talk to clients sometimes we'll even go visit clients to really understand their business so it's not just a price led service um we do we do look at quality we um vet all the suppliers that come on we make sure that they pick up the phone within like a minute or so so we're not putting people onto suppliers that that have um poor customer service or will cause problems so there's there's loads of parts of the business that are sort of account management helping clients out dealing with clients we deal with you know we, we probably shouldn't but you know if if a client has a problem with with um their new supplier obviously we'll deal with that but like six nine months later we were still helping clients with um with uh yeah maybe they'll have a problem maybe this that or that, the other will happen or something will be wrong with the billing we're usually the person they'll, they'll talk to first because they want to just deal with one person rather than their sort of eight or nine different suppliers um yeah. Also, where we have uh, businesses with multiple sites, so we'll have businesses with 10, 12, 15 sites, we'll just take on and manage those sites for them on a sort of like agreed basis. So we'll go to them and agree that we're just going to manage them, we'll deal with the um, renewals. All we do is we just basically email them a copy of the, um, the contract as and when it happens, and then keep them updated on, you know, who they're using, how much they're paying, that sort of stuff as well. So more of a managed service for some of the, some of the larger clients. Okay, and that's really useful. And one of the big things, because this is obviously a, a cost management, a cost reduction sort of chat, is one of the things that people will be asking, say, well, how, how much is this going to cost me in terms of uh, to roll this out? It's a great service to be able to roll it out to all of your clients. But how, how does that work if, if accountants and bookkeepers want to do that? So I'll, I'll go into how we make money and then I'll explain how, uh, how good value it is. Um, <laughs> so we make money from suppliers. So similar to go compare, compare the markets, something like that, um, which means the service is free to use. So we don't charge anything for use of the service, for use of the platform, for putting clients on. Um, it's, it's a completely free service to use. I think the way, the way I like to think about it is suppliers come to us because they struggle to get new businesses on board. And they struggle to get new businesses on board because suppliers, if you think about it, they have, have sales team. And I'm sure if you have businesses as um, clients, they'll complain about how many phone calls a day they get from energy brokers, energy suppliers, each of them, like their only route to market at the moment is sending someone door to door or cold calling. So it's really expensive for them to pick up new customers um, and really difficult for them to do because how do you know if you're a, um, say if you're a fuel car supplier, how do you know which businesses you use that? So we can make it really cheap for them to uh, pick up new businesses and to get their offering out there. So they'll pay us an, a small introductory fee for um, bringing the new business on board. Um, so we don't have to charge the business or the accountant anything. And actually what we're doing with some accountants is we have a um, referral fee in, in place 
where we will actually pay the accountant when the business saves money. So it's based on the percentage of savings that your uh, clients take up. But if your clients take up savings, then um, we give the accountant um, a referral fee, which some will pass back onto the business and some will keep for themselves. Um, okay, that's really clear. That's really, really useful. Because uh, that's always a question that people always ask when you get showing something really great. It's like, okay, this is great, but what's it going to cost me to catch? <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, and in this case, it's a case of there isn't one because you've explained it quite clearly. Um, yeah. And I, in fact, you could use it as a potential of the revenue stream or like you say, if you want to, you can pass on to your clients. Yeah, and, well, so. and what we're finding, you know, I'm sure we'll go into this at some point, is what we're finding a lot of accountants are doing it, are using it as, is, um, is as a way of getting clients. So say a client comes to you and says, um, but not getting clients, uh, a prospect comes to you and says, look, we're interested in using your accounting system. And you say, right, well, give me access to your zero. I'll take a look. I'll price it up for you. And, um, I'll probably put Savia on it to see like what the data quality is. I'll also put reducer on it to see if we can save you any money. Um, in my, your, um, your value to that client that um, is, is potentially going to take you on as an accounting firm and maybe is looking at a couple of other accounting firms, like we see businesses using reducer to do that winning a huge percentage of the business because you're already saying look here are my fees however much they are like i don't know 500 500 a month or a thousand a month or 200 a month depending on the size of the business um but i've identified you three thousand pounds of savings so your first sort of 12 months of fees i've already covered just in the value i've driven just by adding this one yeah. product and then think how much value i can add with these other project products that are slightly more intangible. So you sort of cash flow forecasting. Huge value in the product, slightly more intangible to the customer and slightly harder to get the value across than the pure sort of cost saving that, um, that we can show. No, that's really useful. Thank you for that. And it's, it's a good insight as well. I always like to try and give everybody a sort of a practical insight about actually how you can take this away and use it on a day-to-day -day basis rather than just running away and thinking, oh, that's a great idea. But nobody then can actually start to apply it to our day-to-day -to -day yeah. business life. So I think that's some really good useful use cases for that and how people are actually using it already. I think that's really good. So one of the things that I know you've got is a, um, you've got a report that you've, uh, we were talking about earlier, weren't you, about 7.6 billion pounds worth of savings a year. Do you just want to touch on that? Yeah, yeah so our data say. science team, which is my co-founder, Stu. <laughs> Um, well, there's 12 of us in the office. We don't quite have a data science team yet, but um, he kind That's of... a good title, though. I, I yeah, think exactly. roll with it. <laughs> he's, he's both head of data science and data science intern at the same time because he does all <laughs> the interesting stuff and all the, um, all the mundane yeah. stuff. So uh, what they did is we've had about 6,000 customers, uh, businesses on the system. Um, so what we did was just like a big analysis of how much can we save these businesses on average um, and then what does that look like if we extrapolate it across the UK business population? Uh, the number we came up with was about 7.6 billion, um, which is actually lower than some of the figures that, you know, the CMA, Competitions and Markets Authority, have put on the amount that businesses in the UK can save. But it's still, it's still a huge amount. I think the interesting thing for us was where that saving can be made. And while it is across those all of those eight areas that, um, that we look at, actually the biggest area we found was card payments. So um, taking card payments in person, um, which I think a lot of businesses do, but it's such a complicated um, area to compare. Uh, I think I showed you on the report a second ago, the sort of 10 or so different area, def different inputs that go into um, a comparison on that so I think we we saw that as like over a billion pounds worth of savings across the UK the average saving at well over a thousand pounds per um, business that has that area of spend so a real sort of eye-opener for us in terms of where where businesses can make make savings I think that's obviously a very key one at the moment isn't it because there's lots of uh, hospitality businesses over prime positions to take card payments in person um, yeah. if you said to them right now you can save sort of a thousand pound a year plus I think they'd bite anyone's hand off wouldn't they so I think that's really good bit of data for people to take yeah and well. I think the you know there are there, there are some um, card payment processes with 
great marketing and great advertising and maybe like a very good looking payment machine but you end up paying sort of four or five times as much for those ter terminals and for that um, processing. Yeah. So, you know, the question businesses have to ask themselves, if they're, if they're spending like hundreds of pounds or 50, 60 pounds a month on those things is, is that sort of aesthetic worth the, worth the cost savings? And it depends yeah. on the business, to be honest, for some it is, but in, in general, people don't realize or business owners don't realize the, the amount they can save in some of these some of these areas yeah i know that's really useful and 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 before we sort of go into some questions and and your future plans for 21 is is, is there anything else as well that you can do in or, or sort of give insight to how can the accountants and the bookkeepers listening sort of make cost management more of a priority with their clients this year i'm presuming it's the thing that lots of uh, people have talked about already but what are the practical things that they can do to actually make it at the forefront of the relationship i think i think it's it's the same as um I say the same as anything. So I think the the key for us is obviously accountants will be having these conversations with their clients where you talk about variances and you talk about monthly variances and different GL lines um, or TV lines or whatever you want to call them. And you'll say, well, this has gone up, this has gone down with COVID. I guess um, the, 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 the question or what we really want accountants to start doing but obviously up to, up to you if you want to do it or not is start looking at variances versus market but rather than variances versus um previous periods so instead of looking at and having conversations with your clients about oh the telecoms has gone up because we've got um, more people using mobiles because they're working from home it's it's the case of well the telecoms have gone up but actually compared to a benchmark or compared to the best pricing on the market you're probably 20 percent higher than you need to be so there's some areas for savings there so i think that's that's really where you can start building into your conversations with with clients i think the other the other interesting conversation to have with clients is how do they prepare for for the world where covid starts to go away and things start opening up and how do they put their business in the best position to capitalize um from that opening up especially when you talk about retail hospitality all of that sort of thing what what not boring work but what work can you do now to prepare yourself for for that and that's both looking at like how do i make sure i've got the right stock in place i've got the right staffing in place and i've got the right finances in place to to capitalize on that hopeful uptick in all of those areas um, but also, how do I make sure that my costs are, are managed and I've got on top of them now so that when business comes back and it expands, um, I'm not paying too much for these things. And it's a really easy one to get done now while, um, while we're not, or those businesses aren't inundated with customers. They're not running around trying to find more staff or working out what the guidelines are for like eating outside versus eating inside. Um, like cost management is definitely something something that should be on um, your agenda to talk with talk to with your clients. I think without going on too much, obviously there's the reducer element of it, which is sort of seven or eight areas, but that that conversation can be a lot wider as well. So we're we're just scratching the surface really of um, what cost management can be, and accountants I think should be talking to their clients about. If you're going to talk to your clients about it, about those other wider areas, like if you're spending a lot on food, can you negotiate with your supplier? Can you look at other suppliers? All of those sorts of things. Now, those areas we want to want to help with in the future, but we just we just can't do it now, at the moment. So um, still, still, yeah, an opportunity to talk to and get your clients ready. Yeah. So that's still on the roadmap for the data science team then, is it? As, uh... <laughs> All of it is. All of it is. Unfortunately, they're also the tech team and um, yeah. the stash team. And uh, yeah, they've, they've got many hats. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure probably HR and all sorts of things at other points as well. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> um, that, that, that's really useful. So with Reducer joining sort of the rest of 2021, obviously we've got a, quite a bit of year left with, ahead of us. So is there anything in store that you uh, got that you want to share or any sort of game plans for 2021? Uh, no, no big name changes for us, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. um, it's, yeah, I think it's more of the same for us. We just want to add on more supply areas, more suppliers. Um, at the moment, we've got about 100 suppliers, which is, which is amazing. We have 
a lot of the big suppliers in some of the areas we work in. But areas like waste, for example, that um, are very regionally focused, you get a lot of skip companies all around the country and a lot of regional sort of um, regional waste companies that offer the best pricing compared to the national ones. Um, it's going to take a bit of effort on our part to build up our network there. So add more of those in, um, add more suppliers in so we can really get the best, best prices um, even on a local level. So add more suppliers in, add more supply areas in. So, um, and yeah, just keep keep working with more, more accountants and more businesses. I think, you know, we're, we're really just starting to scratch the surface of how much money we can, we can save people, how much time and effort we can save people. Um, so getting the message out there with, with uh, webinars like this, hopefully some live events uh, later in 2021 and really just spread the message a bit more about what a uh, remarkable solution this is for for businesses yeah okay no that's really useful thanks for that joe so i've got a couple of questions that have come in uh, okay. so nothing too drastic so don't worry don't, don't panic this time and um, mm -hmm. but uh, a good question that's just coming actually just around sort of data uh, generally sort of data security just saying like, obviously if you're pulling data data into the system um, from zero and other accounting systems um, how do you make sure that that's sort of secure in your side okay so um, I'll, I'll give you a bit of background on my co-founder and that will hopefully give you a bit of comfort so Stu was uh, he was at GCHQ for about 12 years before he came and started Reducer um, heavily uh, not interested so he, he ran teams in sort of national cyber security um, and national security. So everything we've built has is um, has been built with a keen eye on data security. So we use the same um, a lot of the same systems that say Zero use in terms of AWS for all of our data. And Stu's written sort of four or five different blogs on account for people like Accounting Web on how both accountants should manage data and how um, account what accountants should ask apps about how they manage their own data. So, like I'd like to say, give you all of the technical details. I can give you a link to the blog that Stu wrote about it. Um, but needless to say, like we we have sort of two-factor authentication on everything in the system we have we're made to use password managers we're made to use all sorts of different sort of security um apparatus to ensure that the data we have on the system is completely secure now what we do do is we do we do take some of the data from zero what you can do on our app is delete it all in one click so it's really easy to go and delete um, the data you can um, disconnect from zero. You can delete the data, and it and it all goes, and that's built into built into the system. So if you do connect and want to get rid of it, it's really simple to do. Um, yeah, I think that, that, that's useful. I think that covers it. I, I'm just I've got visions of what your internal password security policy is looking like at the moment. Well, I th so. I think I th so. Interestingly, I don't know how interesting this is. But interestingly, so what's you like a lot of what you talked about when he talks about data security is a lot of the issues aren't around like most of the things that are hacked or broken into. It's not because of um, lacking sort of uh, technical security. It's always about individuals and how those individuals manage their emails, their passwords, their phone calls, all of that sort of stuff. So all of the big hacks that, that have happened and most of the time that data is lost is down to individuals and them not understanding security policy rather than that security policy being wrong or sort of like the encryption being the wrong sort of encryption or something like that. So we're really strong on that sort of security as well as, yeah. as, well as the other sort. Yeah, as, as a complete sideline, we're going way off piece there. But yeah. I've uh, I've got a friend who's a uh, an IT guy, and he sa he says fifty percent of the call outs that he goes to, he always has a stab at their password just to begin with, and he says it's usually password with a capital P or a one at the yeah. end or something. And he says it's unbelievable how many people will still have that. So uh, there's it, there's yeah, a really interesting so there's a really interesting website that we make all new joiners go to. There's two websites. Again, a bit of a diversion. One's called I, I've Been Porn, P W N E D, and you can put okay. your email address in there and see if you've been involved in any data breaches. 
And the second is one where you can put your password in and you can see if it's on the list of passwords that get run through. Um, and, if, and, and if you're on either of those, if your password's on there, you can't use it again because it's just on a list that they'll try first. Um, and all of those passwords are on there. And if you're on the first one, then you need to um, need to change some things as well. There we go. That's you. So that's a complete sideline for you to uh, help. How many your, people uh, did we data. lose on that? Uh, <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. That no, no, I, 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 I find that kind of thing really fascinating. So thanks for that. That's that's really <laughs> useful. Um, a, a question that's actually come in and um, was saying, how often are the savings reports prepared as well? So if you do it once for somebody and integrate them, um, are they done on a regular basis or do you have to go back in and sort of reproduce them? How does that work? Um, so, so it's dependent on the accountant usually and we'll, um, we'll set that up with them. Um, and it usually it depends on how often you're having meetings with your clients and how often you want um, those reports done. So, you know, typically we won't say more than once every six months, once every 12 months. But what, um, what we'll pick out when we do the first load of reports is we'll pick out key things like expiration dates. So not all your clients will be on the same schedule. What we'll typically do is say three, six months before a contract expires, pull the pricing out for that and then send it to the client. So it's not a um, one size fits all sort of um, approach. It's very much like when is the right time to give them, give them an updated pricing. So yeah. in, yeah. yeah. That's good. And, and, and that's, that's useful. And a question that's come through from Dippen actually is saying, you obviously integrate with Xero and QuickBooks, but do you or do you have any plans to also integrate with things like HubDoc and Receipt Bank directly as well, where they obviously hold all of this information? Interesting. Um, not, not currently. Um, I think, yeah, Receipt Bank's an interesting one because, uh, you know, obviously that they've got all of the data there, but I, we're really focused on, I mean, if it's in Receipt Bank or HubDoc, it always just ends up in zero QuickBooks. So I think we're really happy with their integrations and their APIs. Um, so we don't see any reason at the moment to, to work directly with, with one of those. Yeah, okay, that's really useful. And then uh, a final question at the moment that's come through from Laura is just asking, if we sign up to Reducer and the service, will we or our clients start receiving lots of sort of sales calls and emails and exactly like you said, is the panic from everybody. <laughs> Yeah, so we, um, I'll, talk, I'll talk you through the process and how it works. So what, um, what an accountant does typically is we'll talk to them, uh, prepare a time that they'll onboard their clients, we'll talk them through the onboarding, do the onboarding with them. They'll then move to, we'll create the reports and we'll set up another meeting with the client, with the accountant, sorry, where we'll go through those reports, make sure they're happy with them, make sure they're comfortable with them. And then um, we will work on sharing those with their clients. So um, they'll get shared with their clients via email um, and then the client will, um, will obviously view the report. If they sort of say we want a call or something like that, then we'll give them a call. We'll sometimes give them a call as well if the accountant's happy with that. But anything like that, like our, how we talk to your clients, how we engage with your clients is all agreed with the accountant up front. So it's not going to be a case of you put your client on and they're going to get a phone call from us or anything like that. It's a case of we talk to you, we talk through the best way of working with you to make sure that your, um, your clients get the most out of the system. And we won't do anything that we, we won't do anything that when yeah, we don't agree with the upfront. And, and that's really good. That's really useful. And I think that's a good peace of mind um, for everybody as well. Um, and just sort of shows the relationship of how you work. So I think if people um, are interested and, and people are interested or listening today, what's the sort of next step? Where do they need to go to or to sort of get in touch? What's the best way of going around that? So um, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, we, we prefer people to not sign up directly and to book stuff in, and that's just managing our operation side of things. So you can book in um, a sort of introductory call with one of our business development team on the website. So if you go to reduce.co.uk forward slash accountants, then I think you can book a time in someone's diary in there just to have a sort of introductory call, just so we can get a bit more of an understanding about what you want to get out of the system, um, like your client, your client base, all of that sort of stuff, and that sort of communication piece as well. So that's, that's where ideally people would go. You can sign up directly. Um, if you do that, we'll probably get in contact with you and just talk, talk you through the same stuff anyway. Um, and yeah, or just drop me an email. So my email is joe, J-O-E, at reducer.co.uk. 
uh, drop me an email um, if you have any questions or anything like that, and I'll just get back to you. Yeah, no, that's really useful. And thanks for that uh, today, Joe. That's been really good, uh, really good insight. Um, uh, and I'm not sure if there's anything else that you wanted to cover before we wrap it up, I think. Not really. I think no, you've no, done that's... those things quite well. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think that's, uh, that's probably covered everything, hasn't it? Yeah, brilliant. That's really good. And thank you again for that. And thanks to everybody for sort of jumping on a day uh, on today um, and listening through as well. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I just encourage you to go and have a look at Reducer and like anything, just go and have a sort of a look and a play with it and, and chat to their business development team and just see if it's something that you can work with in your practice and to help your clients out, especially during this time where sort of cash is, cash is king more than ever. And it always is. So, um, yeah, thanks. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, we're a day nearer to the pub countdown as well. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> great stuff. Thanks, David. Bye, bye. See you later. Bye bye.